Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disso. Acer announced updates to their lineup today, and they have some exciting stuff. First, they announced that by 2035, they will be using 100% of renewable energy, which is great. Their new Aspire Vero will in fact be made out of recycled plastic. They call it Post-Consumer Recycled, or PCR. The chassis will be made out of 30% recycled plastic, and the keycaps, 50%. It will be powered by an 11th gen Intel i7 with Iris X graphics with up to 1TB of storage and an ergo lift hinge that lifts up the rear of the laptop and noise cancelling to increase clarity during video calls. It will also have Wi-Fi 6, a USB-C port, it will have two USB 3.2 ports and HDMI 2.0. Now for the environmentally conscious of us, this laptop looks pretty decent. Now the Travelmate P6 series will have two ultra lightweight laptops. One will be a 2-in-1 and one a regular laptop. Now the 2-in-1 will come with a stylus and Corning Gorilla Glass display. Now this model will be called a Spin P6. Both actually use a 14-inch Full HD display with an aspect ratio of 16 to 10 and I love this aspect ratio. Many games do support it and it really is better for my video editing. The chassis is made of magnesium aluminium alloy, making it very light and strong despite it actually only being 0.6 inch or 16.8 mm thick. The clamshell P6 weighs 2.2 pounds and the spin P6 weighs 2.4 pounds. Plus, they have support for 5G and have battery life rated at 20 hours, with quick recharging of up to 80% in one hour. So for someone on the go, the Travelmate series does look quite enticing. Now the Travelmate B6 will be available in the United States starting in December at $1,300 and other markets in September starting at €1,000. The Spin P6 will be $100 and €200 more expensive for the same availability. Now onto the laptops with a dedicated GPU. The Asus Swift X looks very interesting. It is the only one in the lineup using a Ryzen 5000 CPU. So for that alone, this makes it very interesting. It will use the lower powered 15 watt U series, up to an 8 core, 16 thread, 5800U. And it will also have a 3050 Ti Max-Q, which will likely 60 watts, boosting up to 75 watts max. It will have a 14 inch 1080p panel with 100% of sRGB coverage and 300 nits of brightness. It has an all metal chassis that appears to be available also in three different colors. It is just 0.7 inches thick and weighs only 3 pounds. And it also appears to have a fingerprint reader and with the cooler being brought in through the keyboard, I expect it to cool quite nicely. I think it looks pretty enticing and should suit the casual gamer pretty well with decent frame rates at ultra settings. The design looks professional and I could see myself using this on business trips. Their concept D-Line again is not marketed as a gaming machine, it's more of a content creator machine, but it will go all the way up to an RTX 3060 or an RTX A5000 graphics, so they will actually game pretty well. Now as a content creator myself, I am particularly interested in this, especially as the concept D5 now has a 16 inch 3K 16 to 10 display and the 3072 by 1920 resolution will have 100% of DCI-P3 coverage and it is also Pantone certified. Now I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but a 16 inch 16 to 10 panel is the sweet spot for me. Within bezels, these 16 inch laptops are similar in size to many 15 inch ones, and the extra vertical real estate is great. And sure, you do get black bars at the top and bottom if you're watching 16 to 9 uh, videos, but for web browsing, doing lines of coding, or working with photos, videos, or 3D modeling, it is great. The Concept D7 will be a 15.6 inch 4K laptop and the D3 will be available in a clamshell or a 2-in-1 design. The Concept D5 will have up to an 11th gen i7 CPU, up to 64GB of DDR4 3200MHz RAM and up to 2TB of storage. It will have a triple fan cooling setup to help it keep cool whilst remaining under 40 decibels under load. For those looking for a laptop that can game, and be very quiet, this could well be your ticket. Also, what caught my attention is the fact it has a stereoscopic 3D display. 
that allows people who are working on 3D models to look at their work in 3D without having to wear glasses. And also, the laptop has eye tracking cameras, you know, at the top that adjusts your viewing perspective as you move your head from side to side. You can work on, say, a 2D image in Blender and seamlessly switch to the 3D screen so you can see, you know, what your work looks like and helps you spot inaccuracies in your work. This is powered by the Unreal Engine, so it would be interesting to see if this technology is brought to some games in the future. The Concept D5 will be available in North America in August starting at $2,000 and in other markets in July for €2,200. Now on to their gaming line. Now before I talk about the new Acer gaming laptops, they actually showed off a massive 42.5 inch 4K 144Hz 1 millisecond monitor that is HDR1000 with 90% of DCI P3. The model is the CG437KS and it supports variable refresh rate, G Sync, HDMI 2.1, and built in KVM switch, so you can actually control more than one PC with the same keyboard and mouse. Personally, I think it is a little bit large to game on unless you're actually sitting a bit further back, so it may well be more ideal for, you know, for the latest gaming consoles. But I think for $1,800, it does look quite appealing with availability in the United States starting in November. Now, the Acer Predator Triton 500 SE does look amazing. It has an all-metal chassis, a good old 16 to 10, 16 inch uh, panel, which is 2560 by 1600, up to 240 hertz refresh rate with a three millisecond response time using overdrive. The design is very understated as well, so it'll fit into any environment. It is only 20 millimeters thick and promises up to 12 hours of battery life as it uses advanced Optimus. So you get G-Sync and Optimus all in one package with automatic switching. Under the hood, you'll get up to an 11th gen i9 CPU and an RTX 3080 and up to four terabytes of PCI Express Gen 4 storage. It also has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A ports, a fast 7.0 SD card reader and HDMI 2.1. Sign me up. This looks absolutely perfect to me. You can also actually opt for a model with a 165 hertz display. Now one is an LCD and the other is a mini LED with a whopping 1250 nits of brightness. Now this is probably the only laptop visible from outer space. It has five, five heat pipes and three fans, so I expect cooling to be pretty decent. In North America, you can buy this next month, actually starting at $1,750, which looks great to me. Other markets, it'll be available in July, starting at €2,000. Now, I do hope to get one of these to review, so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that. Now, for those seeking a 17-inch gaming monster, then the Helios 500 should fit the bill. Again, it can be configured with up to an 11th gen i9 CPU and an RTX 3080. Now, there's no word on the power, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it having 165 watt GPU in it. You can get up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz memory and a pair of SSDs in RAID 0. It is certainly going to be plenty fast. Now, what I like is that they're actually giving an option for it to use a 4K 120 hertz mini LED display. Now, I did see these at CES once and they are stunning. Very bright and great contrast contrast as it has 512 different backlight zones. You can also opt for either 2K 165Hz or a fast 360Hz 1080p panel. It also uses the same mechanical MagForce keys that are on the Helios 700. Now these allow you to control the speed of movement as you press down on the keys. The further you press down, the faster you can go. The WASD keys can also be swapped out with Acer's racing keys. Now there's also RGB all around it, even around the back so it can shine off of a wall. Plus the keys are per key RGB. You also get an HDMI 2.1 port, a mini display 1.4, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, you get three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports and an optional killer 5G module. So you can actually game on the go. That is perfect because we all know how much Wi-Fi sucks in hotels. Acer will also be offering 5G dongles with this in mind, so you can actually upgrade any laptop to 5G. The Helios 500 will be available in North America in August, 
starting at $2,500 and in other markets in June starting at €2,500. So what laptop are you most excited about? Now, for me personally, probably the Triton 500 SE. I do like a 16 inch 16 to 10 panel and this 665 hertz mini LED display does look quite compelling. Now, thank you for watching. Make sure you do subscribe so you can catch all of my reviews and I'll see you next time. Bye.